Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Summer for those that are new. Today I'm going to be doing a baby light tutorial on my mannequin here. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So to start off, we're obviously gonna section the hair. I'm just gonna separate the hair um, from the front, taking from right behind the ear, kind of right on it, and just move that up out of the way. This doesn't have to be like a super clean section. You just wanna get the front out from the back, and then you're gonna do the same on the other side as well. So for the back, I like to just take multiple sections and clip them up and away. So that way I have the bulk of her hair out of the way for me to put in the bottom pieces and I'm not having to just shove everything up into one clip. So to start off, I like to do just a diagonal back along their hairline here. And we're gonna take as thin of a section as you possibly can to get up close to her hairline. Mannequin hair is quite a bit thicker than a real client's hair, but you want as thin of a piece as possible. So one of the biggest difference between a baby light foil and your regular highlighting foils or a chunky foil is it's very, very tiny pieces that are going into the foil. You want to create a very thin, natural kind of sun-kissed look. So you don't want to go in and just hold your hair out and start weaving from the bottom. When you do a weave with your comb lower down, you're taking a thicker piece. So for a baby light, what you're going to want to do is take your piece, hold it with tension, and you want the tail of your comb to be up as close to the scalp as possible. What happens if you take your weave too low, you create too thick of a piece, which is fine, but that's not gonna give you the look of a baby light. So you wanna hold with tension up very close and slowly take a nice thin weave. Then you're gonna take your foil. I like to fold the foil going down onto the tail of my comb. You're gonna lift up that hair, lock it down, and then apply your lightener. And you wanna fully saturate that hair really well evenly all the way through. And then you're gonna just fold up your pieces. And why I like to fold my foil over my comb is if you get any bit of slipping, you just lift up your foil, slide it back up, and lock it into place. This is the way I foil for all types of foil, thick, light, normal, it's just the way that I was taught. So if you feel like you have a problem with slippage, start foiling with the foil back like that and it's much easier to lock and move up your foil in place. And then I like to continue with about two more pieces along her hairline. So again, I took that weave up very close to her scalp and I'm gonna put my foil in the exact same way as my first one. And we'll do one last one along her hairline here. See, and even this I feel like is too thick. So I'm just simply gonna retake and focus on going a little bit slower to get my weave. And then I'm gonna come around and pack three foils in on this side to match what I've done on the right. 
Okay, so on her left side, we're gonna go again in as close as possible to that hairline. Clip up out of the way. And then again, holding with some good tension, go in slow. Holding with tension, you're just gonna go in real slow and take your weave. A lot of people prefer the baby lights because like I said, they're low maintenance. It kind of has more of a natural sun-kissed look to it depending on how many you do or don't. Of course, there's a downside to them too. It's all just personal preference of what your client wants, which the way you're gonna find that out is by doing a very good thorough consultation. pack in just two more foils right here in this middle section just so she's got full coverage when she wears her hair up for any sort of ponytail. Now that I have her pieces in along her hairline, you can either move up the back doing a brick lay pattern, or you can also just split the hair right down the middle of the head and work up section to section. I don't really have a method as to why I might do one over the other, um, but I'm going to just go ahead and go up in a brick lay pattern because I feel like it's just gonna lay better with mannequin hair. Also with baby lighting, you still wanna incorporate in some slicing too. It doesn't have to all be weaves. You just wanna still, of course, take a really nice thin see-through weave. You basically want any piece of hair that you put in your foil to essentially be see-through with a baby light. Also too, if you're taking bigger sections, because I'm not necessarily like jam packing in for a full foil with this look. So my sections are a little bit thicker than you would do if somebody wanted like a very heavy full head of baby lights. So what I'll do instead of trying to weave off of this whole section, I'll just take a small slice and then I'll weave that. It just, you get a little bit more control with it that way. And then I'm just gonna continue going up the hair with doing alternates between weaving and slicing.
So baby lights are also a great option for any first time coloring client who has virgin hair and they've never lightened or colored their hair. I had a client actually like two weeks ago, she's in her fifties and I called her a born again hair virgin because she hadn't colored her hair since she was in her thirties. And so she was extremely nervous and um, I'm like baby lights is the way to go. She absolutely loved it. She was like, it looks perfect. It's sun kissed. It looks natural. So that's always why baby lighting is a great option for first time foilers. So baby lighting is also a great option for any client who has never had their hair colored or highlighted just because it is so subtle and soft, there's a less likely chance that they're ever gonna freak out and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so blonde, or oh my gosh, I'm so dark, because you can even baby light for low lighting as well. It doesn't always have to be lightener. Baby lighting is a great way to give your clients that are all blonde a little bit of dimension without the commitment of like going in with like too heavy of low lights. They can be pretty much whatever you want them to be. It's just simply the application method is why it's called a baby light. So one thing I want to mention about the bricklay pattern, why sometimes it might be ideal to do, I do feel like it gives a little bit more of a natural way to leave dimension in the hair. You're not covering, I mean, you can bricklay and pack them in and get a great amount of coverage, but I do feel it naturally just has a better look for the natural depth you can maintain in the hair depending on how light or dark your client's natural hair is or what their base is. And then one thing I do definitely wanna note, because baby lighting you're taking such thin pieces in your foil, the hair lifts at a much faster pace because there's less hair for the lightener to kind of fight through. So usually what I like to do is after I'm done applying the top, I'll go in and check the back foils. Sometimes you have to rinse them before you even move to the front, it just depends. I always start off with a lower developer. So usually I use Schwarzkopf's Blonde Me. So I'll do a seven volume, all pretty much in their backside. Um, if I have to remix that, I'll move up to like a 10 up top and then I usually end with 20 in the front. But you get a much better even lift with baby lighting than you do with your standard. You can even do the baby light application and still create a chunky look with them, if that makes sense, which is a great option for clients who are super stubborn are hard to lift. So instead of leaving this much hair out, you would just do almost essentially back to back foils, but with the baby light application method because you're taking such thin and fine sections you get that even lift and the lightener easily breaks through the thinner piece compared to your traditional foil. So now that I have my back done, I'm gonna move on to her sides. With the front of the hair, depending on where the client naturally parts their hair is where you're gonna to wanna to do your parting. If they flip flop it, obviously do it down the middle, but if they always are on one side, go ahead and follow along to the part line of that side. But I'm gonna apply 
to the sides the same way as I start off in the back by just doing diagonal sections back. And I do like to usually pack in a little bit more right around their face. So even though this is a baby light, which is meant to be very soft and natural, a lot of clients still want to see that pop of color right in the front. So I'll still try to do a decent money piece with it still being soft, if that makes sense. But the sun naturally, this is that area where it naturally gives you those sun kissed highlights. So that's why I try to like to mimic it and still pack in a little bit of a money piece. just real thin mannequin hair. I'm just kind of curving along with her weirdo hairline. So one way I like to do my weaving around the face, especially for a baby light, usually a client's hairline is much thicker than this, but instead of weaving from the top, I'll often weave from the front just so you get as close as possible. If you were planning on doing a root shadow, this part, doesn't matter quite as much. Um, you can still do a root shadow though and avoid shadowing right along the hairline. It's just kind of personal preference, but I sometimes, like I said, like to come in through the front just so you get that nice clean line and it gets as close to the scalp as possible. And keep holding it nice and taut while you apply the lightener, especially in these front pieces around the face. I mean, this girl's a little bit more stubborn than a real client's hair would be, but it does help keep that foil locked in place better. I like to apply my hairline foils in first. It just creates a nice foundation, essentially. So you're gonna repeat the same steps of how you applied along her hairline to the other side and then move up throughout the rest of the hair going in either uh, horizontal or diagonal back sectioning, whatever your preferred method is. And again, a human hairline is not uh, typically as difficult as a mannequin hairline is, but you do wanna follow along whatever their natural shape is of their hairline and fill in as much as you can just so you're mimicking the way the sun naturally would be filling in along their hairline. come in to put my last piece along the front of her hairline, try to get it as thin as possible, which is proving to be difficult on this mannequin hair. Another good thing to note is when you are using lighteners, 
It's most ideal to mix a new bowl of lightener every 30 to 45 minutes to keep it fresh. And that also helps ensure that you get even lift throughout the hair as well. Obviously sectioning is key too in the way you apply it to make sure you're fully saturating the hair. But if you are using, if you're mixing up like two ounces of lightener and it's like an hour and a half in and you're still not through it, where you're putting that lightener on in those like most recent sections is gonna take a lot longer to lift because the lightener's old. And then because we're creating a little bit of a money piece in the front, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a back-to-back -back weave right on top of right on top of these two pieces along her middle part. And again, try to make it as thin as possible. Okay, now that I have the bulk of her perimeter in, I'm just gonna go back down to her middle part. And I'm just gonna throw in a couple more diagonal back sections before I place in her mohawk. repeat these same steps on the other side. Okay, what I like to do to kind of do my third money piece foil is you can do this also all throughout the hair if you want to, but I like to just kind of come in and do a little bit of a teasy baby light. So that way you're keeping a little bit of extra depth right on top of this. So you have a little bit of darkness that still falls on those baby lights and makes the money piece pop. So you're just gonna come up Tease some hair down. You don't need it to be like too far down, but enough, about an inch. And then hold the hair taut and just under that tease line. And what you can also do is take your duckbill clip and just go right under the tease and push up a little bit more so that way you're separating in where that teased hair is. Pull taut once again and just take your weave. And then with the teasy, I still like to just lightly feather it up, not like a hard straight line on it, just to keep that line soft. So like I said, you can also do a lot more of an incorporation of teasy lights, it's personal preference. I also have a chunky light tutorial that all post a link to up at the top of the screen that I incorporate a lot of teasy lights into that video as well if you wanna check that out. And you can apply the teasy light method to this in a similar way that I do in that video. Okay, so now that I've got her foils in everywhere and we just have this last mohawk section, I'm just gonna go through and do the same thing that I've been doing throughout her whole entire head. And I'm just gonna be alternating between very thin weaves and very thin slices. Okay. 
Okay, now all of her foils are in, so she's just gonna process like any real client would. You wanna make sure that you're periodically checking your client's foils. You don't wanna leave the lightener on any longer than it needs to. Um, it's really nice if you can start with a lower developer in the back and then work your way up to a higher one in the front. It makes it a little bit easy as far as the evenness you get all throughout the head while it's lifting. So she's just gonna process and then we'll come back and get to toning. Okay, so now she is rinsed and I combed her out to prep her to get ready for our glaze. I'm gonna glaze her with equal parts 7NB and 9GB. I might do a little bit more 9GB. I love the GBs from Redken Shades. But I'm not gonna root smudge her. A lot of times people do always wanna root smudge, but I feel like very few times do we see tutorials where they don't do a root smudge. So I wanna go ahead and leave it out so you can see what it looks like when you do a baby light from root to tip without softening the line. I do in my chunky light video that you can check out, I do do a root tap for that. So you can check out my application method on that one if you like, but for her, I'm just gonna do a simple glaze all over and then we'll get her dried and styled. Okay, so I'm just gonna apply her glaze from root to end, starting in the back and just work my way up the head. You can always also apply this with a bottle as well. It's all personal preference. Okay, now that her toner is on, I'm just gonna let her process about 10 to 15 minutes is what I typically do with most of my toners. If your client has extremely porous hair, you wanna definitely watch it as it processes just to make sure it's not like grabbing too dark, too fast. A lot of times just be patient and watch. Smushing is a great way because depending on if you're using like blue based toning, violet based, green, depending on how your client lists and what you need to formulate to balance it out. Some of them can look a little scary at first, so smushing through the hair really allows you to see into more of the true color. You don't wanna to rinse too soon because then they're gonna lose the longevity of their toner that you use. So she's just gonna process and then we'll get her styled and you guys can see the end result. Okay guys, so here we have our end results. We've got a nice, soft, natural look to the hair with a little bit of a pop of brightness. It's not too much, but not too little. I do like keeping it a little bit thicker around their hairline just because that's naturally where the sun tends to brighten it up the most. But baby lights are a great option for anybody who wants a low maintenance look, a natural look, or anyone who's never colored their hair before and they're looking to kind of start somewhere, but especially if they're nervous, baby like them. So you'll find all that out when you do a good thorough consultation, really listen to what your client is saying to you. But um, I love baby lights. I'm gonna be doing a side-by-side -side comparison video of the baby lights versus a chunky light. So you'll kind of get to see the difference in that. But overall, you pretty much can never go wrong with a baby light. You can pack them in as much as you want and it's still always gonna give you that soft grow out look. And then I do wanna show you guys, because I didn't root shadow her at all, um, how it's still soft when you go all the way from the root to the ends. You're not gonna have that hard grow out line like you would with most foils because of the teeny tiny thin section. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Give this a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It means a lot to me and I will see you guys in the next video.